Hello, Galaxy. I'm Chris Perillo, and I wanted to ask you a question. Is 4K worth it? Like, really, really, really worth it? I don't know if I have a definitive answer. Yes or no? You may have a different answer. You probably will have a different answer. I'm not new to the idea of 4K. It's been around for a while, and in fact, as far as I know, it's still very much in the realm of future-proofing, which is to say that 4K is a, a good format, higher-quality video, so long as your screen supports it. It's just that sometimes those higher-quality videos aren't readily available, specifically on the screens that you wish to view them on or the screens that you have. So, you know, I, as I turn to my notes, uh, you know, I know that we have at least one 4K TV in this house. It was an LG review unit that I unboxed and set up, I think, a couple of years ago. I've only recently started watching 4K content on it, and I think I mentioned that in the Apple TV 4K unboxing that I did last week. Yeah. So, uh, I know 4K content exists. I know 4K boxes to enable uh, the, the whole uh, uh, process of rendering 4K content exists. I know that 4K TVs exist. It's the question of, do they exist together? at the same time, in some compatible capacity. So I had to update the firmware in my TV, which I had not yet done. Uh, it gave me the capability to unlock not just 4K uh, 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 content, uh, not that the TV came with content, just to be able to watch it in 4K, but specifically uh, the HDR. 4K HDR content can now be viewed on my TV. That was kind of a surprise. I was hoping that would be the case, and it turned out to be the case. However, in setup, I realized that the receiver, which I have, which probably cost a few hundred dollars, uh, does not support 4K video. So I had to bypass the receiver and connect directly to the TV through HDMI, which was convenient enough, and I've had, unfortunately, the, the dangling cord concealer from the TV down to the receiver. It's, it, it's, it's not the prettiest thing, but you know what? It works. So in terms of being able to watch 4K content, it turned out that I'm going to have to spend more money on the 4K content that I thought I was already getting for the price that I was paying for the content already. But some services uh, have an upsell. So if you want a higher quality stream, a video stream, so long as your bandwidth supports it, you may have to pay more. Now, it, when it comes to actually getting video, a 4K video, it may be a different story altogether. Uh, now, uh, certain services are starting to chase the model where uh, if you already purchased uh, a product, a, a movie, and, and it wasn't in 4K, you may get that upgrade effectively for free. Not to say that a 4K movie is free necessarily, it's just that it's competitively being priced, which to me is good. That to, is, is, is almost the last hurdle for me. And even after that hurdle, in watching some 4K content, and I, I, I gotta be careful about this because I, I almost want to say alleged 4K content, it's not that my 55-inch 4K HDR, HDTV is not capable, it's just that maybe I need new glasses. Which, which are coming soon, by the way, my new glasses. They're not in, in 4K, the, the, the glasses that I'll be wearing. Um, but I can't really see the difference from where I'm sitting, where I usually sit in the, the bedroom, you know, that far away from the TV. I can't tell you I see a dramatic difference between the 1080p content that I've been used to watching and the 4K content that I've now supposedly watched. I mean, it says it's 4K, so... That must be right, right? I mean, I know that I've got the Apple TV set up magically uh, to be always broadcasting a 4K 60 frame per second video stream in HDR. Um, some people don't like the fact that it's always got HDR on. I guess it doesn't bother me that much, but I'm not an audiophile. I guess I may not also be a, a videophile. So I... I I'm seeing a law of diminishing returns. Some people are going to disagree. Man, if you have the most amazing setup, in fact, I am interested in hearing how you have set up to watch 4K content. If you have, I, I'm seriously curious because I know that there are so many ways to do it. And there's no perfect way of doing it. What you've found works for you. Uh, if only to see if that might work for me as well. Um, maybe I need a bigger TV. I know I need a different receiver. I don't think it's a problem with a set-top box. It doesn't seem to be an issue with bandwidth. It's just all of those things combined are still making me feel that we are absolutely in the early stages of 4K. 
And I'm okay with that. I'm glad I'm taking my time in terms of adopting 4K. So is 4K worth it? Just to turn back to my notes here. Uh, if you buy something new with 4K baked in, yes. Is it worth spending a little more to get 4K capabilities? Possibly, depending on what that delta is. Uh, you're, if anything, going to future-proof yourself if you believe you're going to be holding on to that product for the next N years. Uh, if you don't know, I don't know if I could tell you that going 4K would necessarily be worth it. If it is, you know, replacing one component at a time, then yeah, you're, you're accruing value and you're effectively going to have a new type of experience unlocked. Theoretically, uh, and when I say that, it's not that I'm not watching 4K content, it's just that I'm enjoying the 4K content that I say laughably as much as I've enjoyed the 1080p content. Uh, I, I can definitely tell you there there was a, a marked difference for me going between 720p, which I'm fine with, and 1080p, no doubt about it. But do I need 1080p everywhere? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, Fraser reruns look good on just about any display. Uh, the, the, the idea, though, that I would need to have a 4K uh, display or a 4K movie stream in order to enjoy it as much as the 1080p stream, I'm still not there. Uh, you know, the screen is certainly a, a big part of it. And it's, it's kind of funny to me. I, I've seen small screen 4K displays. I'm like, w what's the point? I guess it's a little sharper. And to some people, yeah, you can absolutely see the difference. And I know you're probably surprised. I'm like, Chris, you really don't see the difference? I do. On the right system, in the right display, at the right distance, in, in the right content, yeah, I can see a difference. But... You know, on on the whole, it, it doesn't seem to be that impressive to me yet. And maybe I just haven't had the right experience. Has anybody, I'm sure somebody out there has, but I wonder how many other people are like me, wondering, is 4K worth it? Um, so that's why I'm doing my best to answer this question now that I've finally experienced, again with the label, theoretically, experienced 4K. I, I'm glad I waited this long. <laughs> I probably could have waited a few years longer. I get it. I understand. But I, I also I don't think that it's necessarily going to improve uh, content necessarily. If uh, you are looking to record something in 4K, now this brings me to my next point. If you couldn't figure out why things may look different possibly, hopefully I'm in frame because I can't see what you see right now. I am using the iPhone 8 Plus 4K 60 frame per second video feature on the device, uh, and I don't know if it was necessarily worth doing. I love 60 frame per second video. When I was recording vlogs, man, as soon as I had an option to jump to 60 frames per second, I went that uh, went that direction. But uh, in terms of 4K 60 frames per second, man, I'm just a talking head. That's it. I'm using the new high efficiency codec. Uh, to be able to record this, so I'm grateful that it's saving space. You know, as we move forward, you, you don't want to have a huge file size when it comes to actually needing to edit video, and I'll clip the beginning and end of it. But here's the thing. I've already run into software codec compatibility issues with Apple's own products. Like, I'm able to record the, the this particular video, but I can't uh, effectively edit the video on my desktop in my video editor because it doesn't support it yet. I can edit it in another editor, but then when I try to view it in the default photo viewer on the macOS desktop, the Photos app, it doesn't render well, and it says, hey, you may want to use QuickTime. I'm like, what? What? How, what? Like, I thought this was all one ecosystem here. Why is everything still disjointed, and they're still playing catch-up with the, with the idea? So you have to ask yourself, is it worth the, is it worth the, the space, the physical space that's taken up on your drive uh, to record a 4K video at 60 frames per second or even at 30 frames per second? Uh, is, is the quality going to be that much better uh, compared to a 1080p video, even at 60 frames per second or even at 30 frames per second? Does it warrant that quality? And that's something that you have to decide for yourself. But I'm certainly not inclined to suddenly just you know jump to 4K display or sorry. 4K video recording capability, despite knowing that I could have a higher quality video file, I don't know if what I'm recording all that often is necessarily, it doesn't need that uh, outright. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, a, a cinematographer. I'm not a videographer. I'm not a video producer at all. Um, but but it's, it, these are things that you kind of have to decide for yourself. And I, I, I would... I, 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 I hesitate to give a definitive answer on that front, but it's still very much a question of, is 4K worth it? Um, you have to answer that uh, question on your own. So in scrolling through my notes here, let me make sure I covered everything. 
yeah, for the most part, I believe I did. Yeah, everything that I wanted to cover in talking about uh, the question, is 4K worth it? I want to know what you think. Now that I've laid out what I think, it's a yes or no. It's not simple. It's not black or white. Uh, so don't feel bad if you're not on the 4K bandwagon, because I, I, I'm kind of on, but I'm also dragging my feet at the same time looking at it from a practical point of view. Let me know what you think about this video quality. I've been testing the, the 4K 60 frame per second video uh, recording features elsewhere, but then that's when I ran into problems when it came to editing and uploading. You know, the software is still catching up to the format in terms of the software that I've been using. Maybe not like the other fancy people use, uh, but I, th I like things that are, are clean, quick, simple, straightforward, and certainly compatible. So uh, what are your thoughts? Let me know. Feel free to join us in our regular live daily TLDR streams on youtube.com slash locker room. I'm sure the topic will come up over and over again. We just recorded our last hour over the last hour. Uh, turn on notifications for this channel and that one. Uh, you can join our Discord chat by becoming a sub on Twitch. That link's in the video description. Or becoming one of my patrons. Uh, that link is also in the video description. Uh, and of course, follow me across social. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you can see me. I definitely hope you can hear me. And may the force be with you.